Um, now, as you can see, my little dashboard over here on the left side changed. And what happened was we left the original uh, analytics warehouse, right? So we have this original analytics warehouse. And what we've now joined is the, the Oracle analytics, right? So when I click on home now, it's going to take me into that Oracle analytics home. So we can see here uh, all of my, <coughs> excuse me, my most recent things that we've been working on, um, the favorites, as well as all the different workbooks. So these are all the workbooks that are included within your NSAW instance. Now, again, you're able to, you don't have to go in and create these. These are automatically created for you as the data gets pushed over. And you can also go in and add more legacy data to these to make sure that you're getting all the information you want inside. And you can also add the connectors just here as well. So we can look at some of the item sales data here that was already created for us. And we can see the details here. Um, we can actually go in and we can edit this information. And when we go in to edit, we'll notice that it looks kind of similar to Excel, right? So it looks like an Excel kind of pivot table type thing where you're able to go in and drag and drop different filters um, and kind of customize this information. So we can see here that we have NetSuite sales order data that's automatically included. Now, if we wanted to add like Google Analytics data or if we wanted to add an additional data table into this information, we could. So focusing on this one, because it's already pre-built with our NetSuite connection, we can see, you know, this is some of the things about the top 10 items sold. It provides me a little bit of visualizations, but probably not as much as I would probably want to be able to better understand the data. But we can look at the different uh, options here. So we can look at the different charts that we can create inside of the NetSuite Analytics Warehouse. Um, again, just like Excel, you have all these different options to be able to kind of customize and manipulate the data. And so we have different visualizations. You can add uh, additional functions, things like that. So you can create your own to make it more customized to you. So let's go ahead and let's talk about this company that we created was Playtique. So again, focusing on these uh, sales order data. So Playtique is like this boutique firm, right? So they are going to be looking at, so I could be in the, the role of the brand manager, and they're gonna be looking at trying to figure out what is going to be the next location for a pop-up shop. So I want to visually be able to see what's going on with my sales orders by location. I want to be able to see what the, the trends are gonna be as far as timing. Um, I want to make sure that uh, the locations are good, the timing is good, the, the items that we're going to be pushing. We want to make sure that those are going to be the items that are going to be selling the best. So we really want to look at these things. So here we can see uh, we're able to have this visualization of a map. So it's not very often that you get to look at a map and see data attached to it. So we can see what the things they're doing. So we can see that California has a pretty high rate and New York also has a really high rate. No surprise, California and New York are having really high sales rates. But also we can see in here is that Arizona. So we wouldn't probably think top of our mind, Arizona is gonna be a big seller, but in this instance it is. So we may wanna consider opening up a new pop-up shop within the Southwest because we can see that a lot of our sales are trending more in the Southwest than in the Northeast. We can see which items are going to be uh, selling the best um, and then the, the top 10 states that are going to be performing as well. So we can kind of look at those. As far as timing goes, we want to see how things are going over a period of time. So we can kind of figure out between there was some differences between May and June of 2022. You know, what happened during those months? Uh, why, why was there suddenly an increase in sales? What is it because we were able to put on some more uh, clearance, and was that the reason why? So we're able to go in and, and kind of visualize what's going on a little bit better than what we can just by looking at data on a table, okay? So we can go back into uh, our item fulfillments, and this shows us our top 10 and our bottom 10 items. So down at the bottom, we have our two different canvas tabs we can look at, so this is one canvas. And again, we can look at these top 10 items, and this is going to be important to me because I want to make sure when I'm doing my pop-up shop that I'm selling those items there. So we can really focus on what those items are. 
and we can also focus on the locations. So again, we see that the Southwest is probably going to be a good location for me to, to have this location. And then we want to look at the timing. So we want to make sure that we're doing this at the right time of year. Um, and then we want to look at the different, uh, we're going to be hosting inventory items versus the shipping cost of the item. That's another information you can have there. Uh, let's look at the bottom 10 items. So we can figure out why are these in the bottom 10. Um, maybe we should look at uh, replacing these items, modifying these items, seeing what the difference is between the top 10 and the bottom 10 items. Um, why are these in the top and why are those in the bottom? So we can look at these trends and kind of get a better understanding of what our customers are wanting and preferring um, and making sure that we're really meeting our customers' needs. So we're able to go in and look at the different data. Of course, we're able to add nice, pretty colorful charts within the analytics warehouse. And again, if we wanted to go in and edit or modify this data, we're able to go ahead and just click this little edit button. And again, we have this wonderful insight button. Um, this one's just populated off of NetSuite, so it doesn't want to give me that extra insight. But we have the option of adding more additional insights to the data that we put in inside the system. Um, so this we can kind of see, we can modify here, we can see what's going on. Uh, so we have the option of just looking at the data itself. If we wanna just look at the data and kind of see what's going on there. From there, we can go into the more visualization and then into the actual presentation. So if we want to go ahead and be able to show our, uh, we wanna be able to show our leadership um, to support our claims and to support the, the sales data, we wanna be able to show that information. So that really kind of helps with being able to present our case. So we're able to go in and show these are what's performing the best, this is what's performing the worst, and it won't take that much effort on your part to be able to create these things. And again, this is not just for the everyday NetSuite user. This is for all different types of people that work at the company. So they don't have to be uh, a NetSuite user to allow, um, to allow the instance. Uh, does it also allow forecasting based on past data? So yeah, you can add the, the, the prior data into the, your NetSuite instance, and then you can have those analyzed and compared side by side. Um, and so you can be able to look at the different trends based off the, the prior and the current. Um, if we wanted to, I hope that kind of answers your question there. Um, but if we also wanted to look at different like revenue and expenses going on, so we can see like our revenue is increasing, which is great. These are all positive things. And our expenses are kind of staying the same. Um, we can look at who is actually, what department is actually putting out the most in the expenses. So we can see the administration department is probably charging lunch too many times to the expense account. So we might want to slow them down with their expenses. But we can see that sales is actually on the lower side, as well as operations and marketing. So maybe they should get a higher budget towards expenses, and then we should cut the administration's expenses. So this is something we can look at just based off these visualizations. We're able to come to these conclusions without having to go through a lot of data to be able to analyze and have these visualizations. Uh, we can also see in the months that we're having uh, the different things. So we can figure out whether or not it's the time of year what's going on, if that may be a, a, an influence, um, as well as like the different uh, budgets that they're going to be charging to. So these are all things that we're able to have within this analytics warehouse view. Um, let's see, uh, that was about it. Uh, so we can go into, if we wanted to go ahead and create a new workbook, um, what we could do um, is we can go ahead and add our data that we want to create with it. And then from there, we can just, it goes, it's already telling me these are some of the, the insights that we found might be able to best help you. So being able to uh, look at these insights, we can see, okay, this is going to give you this visualization and this is what it can help for. So that's really great for being able to help. And just by clicking on them, we should be able to add them into our instance. And so it's automatically populated for us. So I don't have to go in and try to figure that out. So I can look at the best visualizations that will benefit me and add those straight into my account. So that makes it even easier to try to, instead of having to figure out 
Uh, do I want this one? Do I want that one? You don't have to just sit here and do the drag and drop. You can just go off of what it's telling you and kind of help. And then you can add and change the filters here as well. So if we needed to change the filters, we could create custom filters as well. So we can better understand the data and what's going on.